Good morning, everyone. This is Ifat, your G Plus go to gal, and today we are talking to Fernando Fonseca about activism and how to create movements through social media that move millions of people. And uh, hi, Fernando, how are you? Hi, how are you? Nice to be here. Yes, great. And you are in Europe right now, right? Even though you're, you usually live in America? Yeah, I live in Seattle, but at the moment I'm in Lisbon, in Portugal. And is that because of uh, political reasons or just... Uh, no, just work. Just uh, regular work. Just work. But in the meantime, you're also changing policy over there, which is amazing. Mm -hmm. Yeah, well, yeah, that happened, uh, that happened a couple of years ago. It was very funny. I, I can give you some background on it. So let's start with, uh, tell me a little bit about you, how you know, how you grew up, what led you to where you are today. I really don't know what led me to where, where I am today, I have to say. It's, uh, I think that uh, when you have the... Uh, I, I started to be involved with technology really early, early on. Uh, when I was around 17 years old, I was, um, I was already working with BBS systems and um, that led me to have a consultancy with Portugal Telecom because we were hacking into their systems. And so I got hired to go there for six months and tell them what we were doing and how could they fix it. Um, and uh, I always have been very interested in um, how can you use technology to do uh, a better job as uh, someone that is a part of the society, which I think is very important. Uh, of course, at then, I got totally lost. I went to work for an advertising agency um, <laughs> after I did my psychology studies and, uh, and I worked as a creative director. Then I got really fed up, so I went to, to Berlin and um, I started uh, some, uh, you know, uh, a promise of a musical career that never really <laughs> uh, took place, uh, but always, always, uh, I think that the common denominator is that I was using technology, you know, in a very in, in its various aspects, and uh, to to bring to bring things together. And uh, I think that uh, today, uh, you know, the, the advance that we have seen in the last four or five years, it's so amazing. Look at us here. We have uh, you have your own television station right now, broadcasting to the world world, which is you know, it's, it's the power that that gives you as a person and as a community. It's, it's really amazing. And um, I usually say that um, the, the people are so concerned about activism. Is activism something local or is something global? And I, I, I really don't make the difference because, you know, my small village is uh, the hashtags that I use. You know, if I'm interested in something, I follow that hashtag and uh, I monitor some keywords and I know what people are doing and I'm learning with them. And that's... Um, uh, so I, I think they work about interaction. Really. I, so yeah, uh, I, that's where I come from, basically. That I totally agree with you, and especially now with Google Plus, where you have the Hangouts that you can see people. You're in Europe. Um, you know, I have people from like Russia and Pakistan, and we have like Israel and the States, and we're all just sitting here talking. We can share as if we're sh we're sitting in the same office and working from the same you know in the same area. So. Borders are really not that important anymore, right? For connection between people. I think that uh, I, I think that borders are not important. And uh, what what we have seen is uh, like you know, imagine 15 years ago the elections in Iran having such an impact at the global at the global scale as they did just because Twitter existed. You know, uh, all these tools that uh, you know. I know that some people say, oh, Twitter, but that is just to say uh, what you have eaten or whatever. But at the time when the, the Iran elections happened and uh, all of these, that there were people being killed in the streets, you know, and uh, they were using text messages to go to Twitter and without the middleman in the middle, you know, saying this is what is happening and you have to do something about it. And because all of the messages that we got and all of the images that we got from that, uh, created such an impact that we were able to try and come up with a solution. And uh, sometimes the solution is uh, just to make the rest of the world aware of what is happening. And, you know, we have to be very. I think that we we can't. One one of the things that 
that I, I really believe in what comes to activism is that we can't think that we are going to change the world. We have to change it around us. And around us is not, uh, it's not physical. Around us is the networks where we are involved. So the people that we have contact with. So if we, if we just can, in, you know, uh, with one message, with a strong message, say, this is happening, it is something very important. You know, and you should be reading more about this and you should be doing something about it and spreading the message. Just spreading the message is really, really a positive thing to do. So this is actually pretty interesting because I was talking about how most of us just sit at home at the dinner table complaining about policies and saying, oh, this guy, you know, someone should do something about that person or some, this policy needs to change somehow. But that's all we do, right? We just sit and complain. And then there are people like yourself who, are not, who don't only you know, do something, but actually get other people involved. So how do you do that? How do you get started with that? Uh, how do you do that? Uh, basically, you just have to be a bit crazy. <laughs> you know, uh, I, think, I think that uh, it starts by that. I think, I think that, that, you know, I think that uh, it's a mix of understanding how the world and technology works. You know, uh, when I got involved in, uh, in, with the Ignatius movement in uh, Barcelona, uh, I was in Barcelona for another project, for a work project, and it was a weekend, and you know, you are in Barcelona, what can you do? You can go out, get drunk, you know, and party all weekend, or you can go to this place where these people are fighting for something and say, hey, I have a laptop, I have an internet connection, how can I help you? You know, and say, I can help on the digital part of things. Your social media sucks. We have to do something about it. And in a couple of hours, define a social media strategy and start implementing it. So it's really, you know, if you want to do something, there is always a, a door that is open for you to do something. But I, I think, you know, it's a little, you, you have to also know how to write, because if I'm going to start tweeting about something, I have, I don't know, I don't even know how many Twitter followers I have, you know, how, how do I get the message to stick and have other people share it and be involved and, you know, create a community around the Twitter? Well, one of the things, uh, that's a very good question, uh, one of the things, um, let me go back in, in time, there was, there was this action that, uh, that we, we started uh, for, it was regarding Venezuela and Hugo Chavez. Hugo Chavez, what he did was that um, he uh, decided to close some radio stations that didn't allow him to to speak about, you know, for hours about the things that he wants to speak about. And uh, one of the radio stations that he actually closed down, he took the license so they could not broadcast, uh, was a radio station that was very famous because they had this show that. Um, that people could call in and say, I want this song and I want to dedicate it to my mother, to my boyfriend, or whatever. So what we did was that we created a unique hashtag on Twitter and uh, we found out what the number of the Chavez Palace in Venezuela was and we started asking people to call in and ask for, for songs. And the, the number was busy like for two days in a row or something like that until they changed it. And this, this is something that has an impact. This says the world is listening. And how do you do that? Basically, basically, I think that uh, for Twitter especially, you, you have to, people sometimes have this idea that you have to try and reach out to the famous people. And I think that, you know, this has, has to be more like a ripple, like a wave, you know, than just like, hey Ashton, uh, please tweet this. That doesn't matter, you know, it really doesn't matter. Just, it matters to have real people involved in real causes. And if uh, the cause is real and uh, if you are broadcasting it right and communicating it right, then the other people will notice. Don't worry about that. You know, just do all your own work, stay focused, you know, stay very aware. In uh, the case of Venezuela, we ran into so many, so many accounts that were just doing counter information, you know, and trying to bomb the hashtag and, uh, and just to keep, you know, and to recognize that, it's, it's really fascinating uh, you know, because suddenly you are in the middle of a digital warfare and, and uh, you know, it's just not a movie anymore. You are, really, you are really in the middle of it and you have to identify the enemy and you have to follow him you know, and see what he's tweeting and what people are following them and it gets really exciting. So 
it, it's um, it's much more than being sitting down on a couch or in Barcelona on the floor under a scorching sun. But, you know, it's it really gets it, it gets very interesting, and it, it can actually then be applied to business, which is something very fascinating. You know, you, when you learn on these situations, on these life situations, uh, you, you, you learn the tactics and you, you learn how to get more awareness and bring more awareness to a certain subject, then you can actually uh, bring that into the business part of things and uh, make use of it. So it's, um, it, I think it's very rewarding in, in all aspects of your life. And actually, I can see why you're saying now that your world is not where you live, it's your hashtags, because once you start moving people and everybody's talking and sharing, it's really, it feels like a community, right? That stands behind the cause and actually acting towards it. Yeah, totally. It's, uh, you know, it, at that moment, when you have a, a hashtag about some, some event and you are trying to do something with it, you know, it doesn't matter. The people that are contributing to it, the only thing that you have in common with, that, with them is that. It doesn't matter if you like true blood and they like glee. You know that doesn't matter. It doesn't. What matters is that you are focused to in the, to the same cause, you know, and to do something about it. And th and that's very very interesting because you actually develop relations on long term with people that you never would meet just because they are so focused, you know, and they want to do something about the, the same thing that you are passionate about at that moment. So it's it's very very it's it's a, a it's really a brave new world you know uh, sorry for the cliche but it's really a brave new world you know to to be able to to connect with so many people and uh, with you know with so many ideas and concepts and uh, and solutions because what I find fascinating about digital activism is the the amount of ingenuity that exists. You know, and nobody said, you know, if you have three people saying this is impossible, some other people will be saying, no, this is totally possible and you are going to do it like this. And, and you learn so much from it. So let, let me take you a step backwards. Let's say you decide to, uh, to come up with, um, with a hashtag, uh, what was it, 31 or 99 quarks or something like that, right? And you want to start yeah. uh, a ripple, and we'll talk about the quarks, but you want to start a ripple uh, to you know, to start push this hashtag, how how do you go about that? Well, um, the the ninety nine quarks uh, it's an interesting case study because um, it's a, a really because what we did was that uh, we um, we um, the idea behind it was okay they. The, the media called it the quark law, so that you know, basically what happened was that people could not speak badly about the party six months prior and six months after the elections. So that mean, because there are always elections in Portugal, that means that nobody could ever, ever, you know, uh, talk badly about the party and the, the direction of the party. And uh, so what, um, so what we did was that we took these these quarks and. Uh, the, what triggered the, the, the hashtag was a picture. We took a picture of all of the quarks. They all had the, a number in them. And uh, we took the picture and we said, we, are go we made a statement. And the statement was, we are going to give these quarks Did we lose, Fernando? <laughs> I can't hear him either. Yeah, I think he froze. Hold on. He might come back. This is an interesting story. So uh, I'll fill in until he comes back. Um, so the parliament in Portugal decided to not allow anyone to talk against them. And so what Fernando did <laughs> is take uh, 99 quarks and he painted them with the color of the party, I believe, and the number. And then in the day that they got together, he just started going around and giving the corks to people. And he got on national TV, primetime TV. And he actually made the politicians uh, admit that the law wasn't fair. <laughs> and um, I'm waiting for him to come back because I want to know how he got the whole thing going. Are you saying corks, as in wine corks? As in wine corks, yes. Huh. 
Yeah, he just started giving them to, you know, like politicians there. And he came up with an entire strategy behind it that you don't just give it to, you know, random people, but you give it to people who will actually start talking about it. And some of the politicians loved it so much, they started giving it to uh, reporters. And so the reporter was like, okay, who is the person who's giving them away? And it's actually an interesting, you know, turn on things. And, <laughs> and so it's, fun. it's just funny, like his frozen picture. Um, he may have to log out and log back in. Yeah. So um, I'm just going to, there we go. I think he's coming back. Oh, yes, yeah. no, yes, no, almost. Here we are. <laughs> yeah, a time to freeze. <laughs> hey, Fernando. Oh, I can't hear you now. Hey, sorry. That's okay. I was, uh, I filled in the, the story of the, what happened in Portugal. And um, I was talking about how you managed to give the quirks to, uh, the influential people over there. So I'll let you pick it up from here. Yes, no, he's like frozen again. Okay, Europe, you really need to upgrade your connection. <laughs> 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 In the US needs to support more infrastructure in Europe. <laughs> no, I know, okay, it's much better now. It's oh. much better now, I have to say. We still see your picture. Uh, not you, maybe not your video. Doing this. Maybe he's doing this on purpose. Yeah, it's much better. <laughs> there we go. Okay, I only can see your pictures and not you, but uh, it's fine. Okay, okay yeah, good. we can see you, so that's good. Sorry about that. That's okay. Did you hear what I was saying, uh, the last thing I was saying? Okay. Yes? Uh, no, I didn't, sorry. Okay, I filled, I filled in a little bit about your, uh, what, what you did with the courts, how you went uh, on the day when the parliament was meeting and you started giving them to uh, influential people. Yes, no? <laughs> <laughs> I think this is going to be an open discussion among the people in the Hangout of how Fernando <laughs> Move millions. Can you hear me now? <laughs> yes, I can. Okay, great. Let me know when you hear me, so I'll stop talking bad things. Um, <laughs> <laughs> that being an important point. So, did you hear the last thing I was saying about what you did with the courts? Yeah, well, I know what I did with the courts, so it's fine. I hope that you didn't change history then. <laughs> That's what happened after you started giving it to other people. Influential other people. Influential other people. Can you hear us? Tremendous delay. Using a big delay over there. We might get five minutes of interview out of this. <laughs> <laughs> Adam is saying, 10 years from now, I'm going to be talking about the good days when my guests were freezing. <laughs> and we got the best train screenshots, right? <laughs> so until he's coming back. Hi, Monica. How are you? Hello. <laughs> the topic of this hangout really intrigues me because I felt for a long time that you can make a really influential change um, using social media. And... Uh, I would love to hear the story. <laughs> <laughs> I don't want to talk about specifically other stuff that I've done because that's not, you know, the topic of this hangout. But uh. well, well, yeah. <laughs> well, actually, you you were um, and you were part. You were and Adam were working together, right, in um, the virtual walks. Oh yeah, virtual photo walks is very. Uh, you know, powerful for anybody who's differently abled or just wants to get out and enjoy, you know, a different change of scene. Um, but I've also used social media to, you know, basically try and encourage people to call legislators. I've done on-air hangouts, especially when SOPA and PIPA were big threats, where I basically went on air and I said, here's a phone, here's the White House number, I'm going to call. Like, this is what you can expect if you call the White House. 
This is what if you, you can expect if you call your representative in the United States. And I found numbers for people who were international and talked about ACTA and why it's important to keep the internet from such type of regulation. You know, it's just important to, to raise your voice about stuff that matters. That's true, because I've never actually, I don't know what happens when you call the White House. So that would have been a good ha hangout to be oh. <laughs> It was interesting because I, um, the White House operator picks up and they're staffed by volunteers. And so a lot of the times uh, they don't know what sort of issue you're calling about. Like they'll say, like, uh, the woman was like, what is SOPA? I was like, oh, it's a major thing. <laughs> you should know. <laughs> I also wanted to tell her, like, you're also being broadcast live on Google Plus, but she she would then have said, what is Google Plus? Why? <laughs> and what do you mean I'm broadcasted live? Right. <laughs> Who sees me? I don't see TV. What channel is it? <laughs> yeah. But I try yes. and tell everybody, like, I always, I have a magnet up in my fridge, and I tell people, just print out the phone numbers of your state legislature and your representative, and then your representative in Congress. Put them on your fridge, because you'll have to call again and again if you want to make some actual change. And this is actually, I think, where um, Fernando's story is extremely interesting because he's really, he was a part of moving uh, millions of people in Barcelona when they went out and marched, um, what's it called, the indigenous um, mm -hmm. march that was last year, and uh, it was... Um, Indignados, I think, which yes, means thank you. upset folks, indignant people. Mm -hmm. Yes. Um, and so he was in charge of, you know, the Twitter account um, and doing the entire strategy behind it. And so I'm like, how do you get that started? What, you know, how do you move people? So I'm yeah. hoping that he comes back in the next five minutes. <laughs> <laughs> if not, we can open it up and do a whole discussion about the uh, social, social media activism. and maybe Yeah, sharing that sort of stuff is not easy. I remember when Occupy Wall Street started, sharing those first videos in September was, um, people responded very poorly. They were like, this is in America? What? You know, like, how could this be happening in America? You know? <laughs> but it can happen anywhere, people. Right, and we, we never think that, I mean, America is supposed to be we the land of freedom. And I'm back. Yay! Welcome back. <laughs> We're all eager to hear how you get the movement started. So let's let's go back to the 99 ports. What happened there? Okay. Well, so uh, what happened? Well, it, you know, it was kind of a perfect storm as well. Okay. Uh, the traditional media were there, but we did uh, we did the challenge and said, okay, we are going to we are going to deliver these courts to to the big shots in the party, uh, and people would not believe us, and they were saying, okay. That's, you know, um, how are you going to pull that one out? And you have that, that, and you have a very, very, very slow day at that Congress. And so the media was just hungry for something to happen. And so they started to, let's start an hashtag to get Fernando a better computer and internet connection. Yay! That's a good, <laughs> that's a good, that's a good one. But uh, so what happened was really, really like a perfect storm. Because suddenly the media were asking us, uh, how many courts do you have? How many do you give already? And so something that was just basically to be a local action, and then it turned digital action, and then suddenly we were opening all the all the, the you know news news shows in Portugal because you know they had nothing to talk about, and this was the only thing important that was happening in the political party congress. So this also shows, and we made fun of that because. You know, when, when this, when delivering courts and calling attention to, to this law was the only thing of importance that was happening in the political party in Congress, you know, maybe they should not do the Congress at all and spend that money, you know, in helping people in, in real life with real problems. So we managed to, to catch, you know, to, to send s several messages with the, uh, the, the time that was given to us. So you basically were sitting there and thinking, okay, how do I get my point across? And 
right? And what you are looking and you're like, oh, there's a wine <laughs> cork, a wine cork bottle. I'm gonna take that and start painting it. And why 31 was on it? Oh, oh, uh, the the, the the number, the name of the, this collective that we had was the had the 31 31 number in it. We started we started this movement to. It was, actually, it was a counter movement to a very right wing movement in Portugal, mm. and uh, so what we did was that we created this one uh, that uh, basically they they uh, they adopted Darth Vader as their image, and so we were the Yodas, and um, and uh, we were the good side of the force basically, and uh, the positive side of the force, and um, and. It was funny because they, the, this block is very connected to the to the government today, and uh, and we still keep their ass on social media. You know, we still have a, a bigger presence on social media than they do, and uh, it's really really interesting to see that. I, I think it's sometimes it's really a matter of having really simple ideas that you actually can do. You know, it's uh, that if you can, you know, think of something that you actually can do. Buying 99 quarts was easy. You just go to some place and you buy 99 quarts, and then you, you know you get them painted, and then you go there. You know, don't think of we are going to produce a huge bottle of fuel. You know, that that is not going to work. You know, just have an idea and then start cutting those that you can't actually implement, and just you know focus on the ones that you actually can do. And that's really important these days. You know, because you have we have all of these amazing channels. You know, so let's give something that you actually can can produce. You know, and uh, that is around you. And that, that's I think that you know, keep it simple, stupid is a, a really, really, really good motto. Hmm. And so when you start, you know, you you were behind the social campaign and the Twitter campaign in the Barcelona um, movement. Yeah. So when you start thinking about how am I going to get that out to the world? What is the thought process behind it? And what are the steps that you're taking? In order to start a, a huge movement, uh, you know, from going. Well, the the, the main concern uh, the main concern was uh, to to take the media out, okay? Because Barcelona is a very conservative city. Uh, you know, we all have this idea about Barcelona party, and but uh, politically it's very conservative, and the media is very conservative. So uh, you know, when you have like 1,500 people in the square. Uh, the newspapers were, were saying a dozen people are in the square. So, okay, we and of course at the then the, the other media and even the international media were just replicating that message. So, the first thing that we wanted to do was to open the picture and the first saw that I had was to have a, a channel in English that we could broadcast what was really happening so that people knew, okay, this is from there, this is local, they are streaming video, they have the picture, and there is no way that that's just a dozen people. There are way more than a dozen people there. So first, the first focus of the strategy was to broadcast information. The second focus of the strategy was to get people organized, you know, so we need food, we need water, we need uh, more uh, power, you know, we need some people to come in to clean the, the square after these people go. And so this was the second focus. And, um, and was this, this focus was totally in tandem with, uh, with the Spanish channel, but to attract people that were in Barcelona, tourists that were in Barcelona, and that you know, were trying to help. But if they don't have a lot of Spanish, it's very difficult for them to, to know that they are needed. So we use this account as well to broadcast a message, yes, you are welcome, and yes, you can come here, and yes, we have things for you to do. You know, like translating text into their native language and all of this. So the, the account really had two focuses. The one of the friendly information and, uh, you know, real-time information, and the other one Getting, getting more people in, you know, people from other from other countries that they could actually participate in this in this movement and then take it out. And we did see that they did some of them take it out. So, so, so then the other part, very different part of it, 
which is how, how are you going to communicate with your movements, you know, and how are you going to, <coughs> how are you going to uh, coordinate the message. So, you know, social media is very important. We used, we used several hashtags uh, that, that was not the public, but we were discussing in the public, but we were organizing messages by specific hashtags that were, were under the radar if you want to. So it's just used by the organization. Uh, we also, of course, use the uh, private forums for some of the stuff, but, uh, but most of the discussions were public and everybody could participate in them. So how did people, how did people find, uh, find out about the hashtags that you used? How did you get that to the, to the masses? Well, I mean, it's, it's, <laughs> the, it's, it's not like that. Um, the masses choose the, the hashtag to use. It's, it's, very, it's a very, very different process. You know, uh, we, have seen, we have seen many cases where people and corporations have, have wanted people to use the hashtag and the hashtag, uh, the hashtag has totally blown in their faces because they are being hashtag bombed. You know, uh, the thing is, is, here you have to be humble and you have just to follow the, follow the people. If the people are using these hashtag or three hashtags, you know, then you go with them, you start using those hashtags and slowly you, you start talking with the people that have more followers or that are more influencers and you say, Maybe we should use this one because it's shorter or because it makes more sense. But you never, you never, never, never can go into something like this. And this is uh, for activism and this is for, for business as well. You know, you can't ever go to the users and say, we are going to use this hashtag because our marketing department decided that this is the one that we are going to use and the client already paid a lot of money for it. No, you have to go with the users and the users here are Prime. So, you know, if they are using three hashtags, you use three hashtags. And then you slowly, you know, start to make your path, if you want to, you know, to do something different. But and it, sometimes it's not. Sometimes it's already there. You just have to jump in and into the bandwagon, bandwagon and it totally works and it makes perfect sense. So it's, uh, it's I think it's, um, it's, uh, what we did with the Internet uh, Freedom Movement, which was off green against Nvidia uh, because of SOPA, you know, that, that we, decided, we decided on Google Plus that uh, the name was going to be off green and then we just translated that into Twitter. And it was, it was funny because I think it was just three weeks ago that I still saw an off green tweet, you know. So it still lives on. You know, the people adopted it. And, and, and that, that's what I think that what makes a, um, a communication strategy for digital um, successful is when people still use something out of it, you know, out of context, but um, it's really, 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 really interesting. So when you, so it's interesting because basically what you're saying is like find out what the conversation is out there and then jump on it and then move it to, uh, to your own cause, right? Kind of like finally to whatever you want other people to talk about. Yes, yeah, it's, it's, you know, if people are talking, okay, uh, if people are talking SOPA and BIPA, the example of SOPA, people are talking about SOPA. Okay, what are we going to do? What is the, what, you know, and you just say, okay, these people are talking about SOPA, so what we do about, what can we do about it? You know, and uh, how can we help, and uh, how can we, you know, how can we help and how can we introduce our own ideas for it? So you just use the same, the same hashtag. You know, you just, you just have to use the same hashtag so that the other people are using. So, uh, and of course, at the end you say, hey, we have this idea, you know, and we are receptive to ideas, but we have this one that we want to share with you. So we start a conversation. It gets really chaotic, of course, because, you, are, you know, when it's a really, uh, a really popular, uh, subject, you know, you have like hundreds of tweets every, 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 every second, you know, so to keep track of which ones are important or not, it gets, it gets a bit chaotic, but again, it's very challenging and you learn a lot with it. So now that uh, Twitter and, and, uh, and I think Facebook also, but Google Plus are sharing hashtags, is the yeah. same hashtag is all across the board, all 
all through the other networks? Is it can you use the same one? It will show up everywhere. I wish. <laughs> <laughs> I wish. Again, again, it's uh, you know one of the things that one of the things that Google Plus has that uh, Twitter doesn't have is that it's not good, you know. He has more than 140 characters, you know, to to, to write on. So hashtags on, on Google on Google Plus can be really long. I mean, really long. And our people that are very creative in creating really long hashtags, something that they can't afford on Twitter because if not, they it's just the tweet is just a one hashtag. But um, but it's uh, it's um, uh, sometimes there is a correlation to it. Stop Sopa was one of them. Yes. People were using the same the, the same uh, the same hashtag, um, but there you know uh, there are other examples. Uh, for instance, with EPA, which it was the next step of class legislation in the U.S., uh, people were using totally different hashtags on Twitter and on on Google Plus. It's uh, it's very it's it's very interesting, very very interesting to see that both communities are very active, but then they are already being absorbed by the perks that uh, every, you know, each platform gives them. So they just, you know, and it would be great to have a way of having the Twitter feed coming in and Google Plus going out based on a hashtag. That, you know, you know, you know lots, of, lots of developers. I challenge them to do something like that. It would be really useful. I wonder if that's actually going to, you know, something that Google will be interested in. Because if that happens, do you think, you know, Twitter will be, there'll be no more use for Twitter? Everything happens inside Google Plus the same way? Yes. 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 <laughs> I, 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 you know, I, I'm one of those people that thinks that uh, Google should buy Twitter, but that's me. That what? Say that again? Google should buy Twitter. Maybe. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Right? So you um, you found out about you, your passion sounds like it's technology and activism, right? You're you're not the kind of person that will just sit back and, and be like, oh, someone is going to change the world for me, but you actually take action on that. And so, um, did you are the two of these uh, two of these passions go hand in hand in your own company now? Yeah. So can yeah. you talk about what you're doing in your own company? How did you? You know, come up in creating that and um, and what he does. Well, uh, the the company got started, and uh, now you're going to laugh because the company got started because the the president, the Portugal president, Portugal's president, needed a social media strategy for the reelection, and uh, they because of the 99 courts thing, they they thought that uh, I would be the guy to design it, and uh, you know, so they invited me. Um, and uh, after some negotiation that we had to, to have, because it was not only about the money, it was also about lots of things that I wanted to do, that I wanted to introduce, and if they didn't let me, I would say no, because it would make no, no, no sense for me. I designed a social media uh, strategy and they did some, some part of the implementation. And um, I really thought, okay, this is something that I could do. You know, this is something that, that uh, would be interesting to do, and uh, on a more professional level. At the time, I was moving to the United States, and uh, so I started to think about how can we make an agency that actually um, does something that no one is doing, which is to put the geeks, the communication geeks, talking with the code geeks, you know, so that uh, we have digital strategies that make sense that are integrated with um, the the overall communication, and that we can provide a, a service to to advertising agencies that are being pressured by clients to have a Facebook page or whatever, you know, but to do it right. And so, uh, <coughs> so what, what uh, we, what we, what we, we have, we have created is an agency that works with other agencies. Of course, that we work with some direct clients, and we are doing a lot of uh, online reputation management, which I think is a totally new area that has always to stay under the covers, but uh, it's very important for the clients, I think, uh, and, uh, that we provide the service. But um, one of the things that I'm doing right here in Lisbon is that uh, we, uh, I am uh, working with our partners because we are developing a, a, a communication strategy for a client, a new client, you know, that integrates everything, that integrates, that integrates uh, offline media, social media, 
you know, and uh, and how that plays together with the brand and what is the brand message. So it's um, it's this kind of this kind of thing is very challenging. And uh, as Doc is saying, and I totally agree with him, you know, uh, everything that I've learned with my activism that I'm going to still be learning, I'm applying to my own business. You know, how can you get? How can you be focused? You know, on how can you come up with something that you know they are going to be able to implement in three months? You know, uh, how can you how can you put the user first? You know, this is a concept that everybody talks about it, but when you go to the majority of the websites and uh, even on your social media experience, you don't experience this. Apparently, it's the brand that is first and not the user. And uh, so, how do how do you how do you communicate to your client? that they really have to take this seriously, that the user comes first. And it's not about how they want the website to look like, it's what the user finds more useful. So, the, and uh, you know, it's uh, how, how can you have a social media strategy that is based on this, that the user comes first. So, we are, we are setting our foot in Europe and the United States with this new concept and uh, it's going pretty well. And um, of course, that uh, I only work with crazy people, so uh, it has to, to work well, basically. So, what kind of uh, can you give um, advice to businesses? What kind of um, things they should look for or put in or integrate into their website to let their user feel as if they're a part of a community? I, I think that uh, you know, I, I think that the first thing that the website, you know, that the business has to think about is really put themselves really put themselves on, on, the, on the role of the user, you know, and say, when I come to, to this website, what do I want to see? Why do I come here? And maybe I come here because I want to access my account and see how much money still I have left on my, you know, on my account. Or uh, maybe I want you to remember why I came here the last time, you know, so that I don't get the same crap that I did. You know, so this kind of experience that then that adds up with social layers, you know, uh, it for me is totally unacceptable and really, and uh, the word that I'm using is unacceptable. If I contact an account on Twitter, three days later, if I contact them again, I want them, I want them to recognize me and they should recognize me because this is customer service, you know what I mean? So the, these are the standards, you have to, you have to pull up these standards. And you have to make your clients understand that if they don't live up to these standards, they are not, never going to be the brand that they think they are. So it's, uh, it takes a lot of um, evangelization. That's the word that I'm going to use. Did you freeze? Ay, ay, ay. <laughs> Fernando, come back to us. There we go. Yay, we got your double. Awesome. <laughs> Can you hear me? I can't hear you. Hello? There we go. Okay. So tell me about, um, you have, we talked about your two passions are technology and activism. What in your life led you or who influenced you or moment in your, time, in your life that influenced you to become the person you are here today? Oh, God. The person, uh, you know, I'm going to say Douglas Adams, and it's not going to make any sense at all. But I think that uh, you know, reading Douglas Adams, and um, and I read it, his all of his books when I was really young. I think that Douglas Adams shaped my mind in a way that led me to believe that nothing was impossible. You know, and uh, you know that the absurd, the absurdity that it that uh, that it can create in your world. Um, make sense and uh, that, that, that there are places uh, where you are accepted by who you are even if you are totally if you, your ideas are totally out of the box you know not it's not even out of the box there is no box you know so and um, and so if there is no box how can you reshape and reinvent you know and the event and work on layers and uh, just make things actually work and come through? And uh, I think that uh, Douglas Adams is definitely an inspiration. Uh, it's uh, it's something that I I still go back to the books, you know, every and when I say every now and then, I say every two months or something like that, because I need to reread something. Um, 
In terms of technology, I think that the, the person that most inspired me uh, was William Gibson. William Gibson was writing about cyberspace in 1979, in writing it on a typewriter, uh, and uh, you know writing about it in the typewriter, and uh, and that's true, Doc. That's uh, I'm going to wait to her, for Fernando to come back to us. <laughs> it's going to be a very interesting uh, back and forth to Europe. Yay. You're back? So what, <laughs> I love seeing uh, you and your twin here. Um, yeah. so, <laughs> um, so what is the, you know, the, one thing that you are most proud of, like the greatest accomplishment in your career to date that you're most proud of? Oh, okay. I think that uh, I can't really tell you because I'm not a <laughs> Because why? Because I wonder if I'm the A. Because it's all my reputation and I'm really proud of it. Uh, has to do with brand perception, and uh, it's uh, something that I really enjoyed. Um, you know, but the thing that I'm most proud of until now is that I am person enough to be loved by the woman of my life, and uh, that's you know, and by my and the kids, and uh, I think that's the most important thing at the moment. You know, I'm proud. I'm proud to be able to be the person that deserves their love. Um, it's beautiful. Yeah, sometimes it's more about like technology and acting. <laughs> <laughs> so aside of the technology, you also have a humane side that you really like. <laughs> yeah. So um, what do you think, in your opinion, if anyone wants to become um, an entrepreneur today, what, what is the most important skill that someone like that needs to have? Uh, I think that the most important skill to these days is to know how to make bridges. You know, you have to you have to be able you have to be able to make bridges between different people and different disciplines. I think I think it's really really important. It's it's important that you know if you want to start your own business and if you have your own concept, you have you have to put people around you. And your main job, 24 hours a day, will be to make the bridge, to make people understand each other. And I, I think that without that, I think that without that. You really can't be successful, and so you have to you have to be a modern time uh, Greek, you know, uh, not not the, the Greeks as they are now, but uh, you know, ancient Greek now, a man, you know, almost Renaissance man with some Greek on the top. It's a philosophy and dream and aspiration, and uh, so that what you do is that you just know a little about everything, and you know, and you. It's not that you know, but you feel and you sense how the points touch, how people touch, you know, and uh, how can they help each other, and how can they together help the whole effort of your project. So you have to be a connector. You have to just like be there to connect the dots and to, to sometimes translate, and they will always be speaking in English, but they will not understand each other, and you have to be there to translate and to make uh, people feel feel um, more at ease with it themselves and with, with others. I think that's really important. I love that because basically what you're saying is like you need to lead, right? Rather than to manage, you need to ins uh, inspire people to be everything that they can be. Yeah, and, uh, it's, it's that and uh, also the fact that, uh, you know, sometimes you have this idea that uh, you, you have to manage people and you, you don't. You have to give them the fishing rod and say, go fish. You know, and then I I will help you with whatever you fish. I will help you to sort out the kitchen. You know, and what are we going to cook here with this that you've got? You know, and then uh, the guy that is doing the vegetables is exactly the same thing. It's like cooking, but uh, it involves code and uh, graphic design and uh, communication. Uh, but it's just like cooking, really. So what is a what is a day in the life of Fernando Fonseca like? Oh god! At the moment, it's pretty, pretty active because I'm working on two time zones. So um, we usually start working in Portugal in this new in this project that we are working on around nine. Um, because I'm in Europe, 
but I am allowed to take lunch break, uh, <laughs> which is uh, which is nice. Um, and then um, around five, uh, I leave this office and I go home and uh, I start working on the American project. So and uh, around four o'clock in the morning, I get some sleep and then I start doing it again. That's that's a uh, how a day in my life at the moment looks like. <laughs> and if you were not um, technology strategist uh, and an activist, what would you be? Uh, I would be Doc Harvard's fat. <laughs> <laughs> I think you missed that. <laughs> yeah, 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 he's looking at me like, uh, well, yes, but, uh, you can I, be I, mine. <laughs> I, I would, uh, would be again, you know, uh, something that would lead me to where I am today. Uh, I'm sure. I, so I, you, you basically I, found uh, your spot and um, and and you're enjoying doing it. Yeah, I do a lot, definitely. That's awesome. Um, what's your favorite quote? My favorite quote is uh, one from Douglas Adams, of course, and uh, you love the sounds of deadlines. You love the whooshing sound that they made when they passed by you. <laughs> which is, uh, which today is, uh, it's actually, you know, it's very fitting in a day like this today, actually. <laughs> Where, where do you see yourself five years from now? Uh, five years from now. I, I, hope that, uh, I hope that in five years from now, some offices... Um, no, Adam, I don't want to be there again. Uh, but uh, I think that in five years from now, I, I would like to, to have a bigger structure in some ops, um, that That we can have more competition in what we are doing. Um, you know that uh, we can, um, where we can actually have. More, I want to have more time for myself and for my family. That's that's uh, that's definitely something that I want to have. Um, but I would like to have, um, you know, to to be involved in uh, projects that uh, just think about strategy four years from now. You know, not working for the now, but. Uh, the, you know, having some ops being a, a company that is uh, a company that is helping clients and uh, you know thinking about on a four year from now what are we going to be uh, and that's something that really fascinates me and uh, that I think that we could uh, provide some some, uh, some uh, so you want to invent the future uh, yeah. <laughs> That's awesome. Guys, we have about 10 more minutes. If you want to open your mics and uh, ask whatever question you want about uh, activism, social media, how do you get hashtags to move people, go for it. If not, I have some more in, uh, in line. And Doc has a few. Doc, can you hear us? No. <laughs> Doc, I'm yes, I can actually. Oh! <laughs> Giving you compliments here and you're not responding. <laughs> oh, sorry, I was in another conversation. I, I, I'm not asking. The, um, no, the, the, I'm getting an echo. Is it just on me? Okay. Um, then I can ignore the echo. Uh, I was just thinking that uh, Fernando and I have had many, many conversations about uh, not being inside that box and not even recognizing it, and um, we've, we've collaborated on uh, the Internet freedom a few times. Uh, but I, I think it's that a lot of folks get wrapped up in, they hear activism, and it's got to be a political change. It's got to be something to change the way a people are or a particular government stance or something like that, and, and that's just simply not the truth. You can It could be something as changing the way people perceive education, um, like arts and sciences or something like that, or changing uh, the way business is done as far as, like, there used to be a time when people were proud to be creative or, or proud to be a musician or whatever, and now it is, um, it, it's just, it, it's almost like it's a shame thing to admit, hey, I'm a creative, that's my life, I play music, I do art. You know that type of thing. So it, it's it's really awesome that um, uh, Fernando is able to bring that back into a bunch of a lot of folks and and explore it, and as well as actually help me out on a few things. 
I go ahead, Fernando. Is this, I didn't I didn't get the question. <laughs> I think we have some kind of a delay here. Uh, I don't think it was a question. I think Doc just wanted to <laughs> share his support. <laughs> that was it. I, mean, I said I was going to be here to support him. But I agree with you. I think, you know, I, with Google+, Plus, the way it's coming out and with the Hangout, and we start seeing more and more artists like Daria and, um, and um, Trey, right? Who would imagine a photographer has two million followers and creating all these photo walks and everything through social media that is not even a year old. So I think Google+, Plus is really a place for um, artists to come out with their music and their art and, you know, their conversation and really shine and, you know, even make money from it. Like, are two writers down here. <laughs> so I think it's a, it's a great, what's that? Hopefully. I think that, I think that we are going to, I, I think that we are still in the beginning of, you know, all of the potential that, uh, all of the potential that Google Plus has. You know, uh, I meant hands down, you know, true supporter of, of Google Plus, I think that is not a ghost town. You know, I have the data to, to confirm that it's not a ghost town. Um, and I think that, you know, if uh, six months ago I would tell someone, uh, you know, in six months' time we are going to you are going to be able to be broadcasting to the world via YouTube, no matter if you uh, have 1,000 followers or if you have 12 followers, people would say you are crazy. Is that something to happen? And here we are. You know, it doesn't matter anymore. And uh, um, I call this the democratization of access. You know, at the moment. At the moment, the thing, what is happening is something very, very interesting, which is you don't have any excuses anymore. You know, the technology is here. You can use it. So, you know, there is no excuse. Oh, I can't, I can't do this. I can't do that or whatever. No, the technology is here. Just use it. But, um, actually, it's a great question because now, you know, you're taking activism to a next level. It's not only text and hashtags. It's actually video and audio and people interacting live, right? Like Sarah Hill was doing the, was it the protest from, uh, no, uh, video from the Mondial. Yeah. Um, right? So now you have, you don't need reporters and TV stations because you have 10 people with iPhones and you get 10 different angles of the same protest. Exactly. Right? And, and so take that and now you really have ripples. And with Google+, Plus, it, you share it like, you know, all over the web, like really quickly. Yeah, so yeah. what what will activism you know how how will activism now like what what is it turning into? Okay, uh, first I want to address the the question from Rashid, uh, which I think is a very interesting question as well. Uh, the challenges, I think I think that the biggest challenge in business wise is that uh, some some agencies don't understand the that uh, social media is not just to integrate. Uh, they old marketing into a new rap and uh, Facebook it and Twitter it. You know, this is the biggest challenge. So there is a price. There is a price problem. You know, because if you are doing communication and designing a strategy, a communication strategy for social media that has into account, you know, that Google Plus is a different social network than Facebook, and the people that are there are different. You know, the targets targets are different. Um, if you you have to spend time doing this. And you have to, of course, put resources in, and this is going to cost something. You know, uh, of course, there are people that say, "Oh no, I will set you up uh, a Facebook page for one hundred and fifty dollars." That's never going to work. You know, we know that that's not going to work, but some some agencies are trying to push that, and that's something that uh, we see as a challenge. But uh, you know, so that's why we are trying to position ourselves into a premium service. You know, so that people. That people that approach us know that, that they are approaching a premium service as well. Um, from uh, the political world and the activism world, and now I'm going to, to answer this question and introducing uh, the, the answer to your question as well, Ivan, which is I think that what we are going to see is that we are going to see the government putting uh, more uh, locks in place or trying to put more locks in place. And uh, this means that uh, we are going to start seeing, um, as we are seeing already, uh, you know, less legislation to, to, to block websites, uh, you know, um, trying to, to add the middle, you know, or trying to have uh, real-time access to what you are saying, 
in order to shut you down. And what I think that this is going to evolve to is going to is going to evolve to into a second internet, into a you know into a into an in, infrastructure that is going to be totally below radar, so that you have you know basically uh, let me let me give you an image that uh, will put this into perspective what I'm trying to say, which is you're going to have um, a country like Mozambique where you have these beautiful, beautiful buildings where nobody lives there because there's no money, and then you have the slums, you know, where everybody lives there. And uh, this is what the internet is going to be like. The, the control internet is going to be these beautiful buildings. Nobody is going to be there because nobody can afford it. Uh, not, you know, not uh, psychologically they can't afford it. Uh, probably will cost more so that you can't afford it. Uh, which is something that is being discussed for years now, which is net neutrality. That you know, some people are trying to have the internet be like um, like a, a cable TV thing that you pay more for YouTube and you pay more for this and you pay more for that. You know, so um, so you have this you have this really 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 big problem, and I think that uh, the the solution is going to be a dark net, you know, where everybody is, and this will all evolve again. If so, and the technology is already in place. We, have, we can have uh, uh, mini drones, the pirate bay drones uh, are already in place, which is really, really cool. If you didn't see that project, please see it, which is basically they have servers that fly. You know, so they are never, you know, so if you want to shut down the, the pirate bay, you have to bring in the drones. So th this is, these, are, these are things that might, they are fun to talk about, but they are already there. They are already happening. And, uh, and this is uh, really, really, really interesting. I totally agree with you. I think it will be now moving towards um, you know, content and quality, because everybody has access to it. So now it will be very interesting to see you know, wh who's rising to the top as a thought leader, as quality, and actually gaining traction and, and followers and creating interesting conversations. So it's a it's a very interesting world that we're <laughs> we're stepping into. It's full of opportunities, basically. Yes, and if you know how to do it, right? It's uh yeah. the, <laughs> the sky's the limit. Yeah, but always check out what's really important. Say that again. I think that it, um, uh, it's, you know what it, the last lesson that I want to leave is always share your knowledge. Don't keep it to yourself. Share it. You know, yeah. like, we'll come back. So it's very, very important. We are living in a culture area, and this culture has to be, you know, I can't stress enough how important it is to share the knowledge that you have, and if people need your help, you say, yes, I will help you, because that will come back to you, no problem. And if it doesn't, it doesn't matter. I totally agree with you, and actually this is uh, what even Mike Elgin was saying, right? Share publicly. Stop being like so selfish. I'm on I want Google Plus. Talk to the world. Share your opinion. Um, talk to people. So, yes, love that. Um, if there are no other questions from you guys here, we are right on time. We're good. Awesome. Did you see this? This is the deadline. <laughs> And it just blew. Awesome. <laughs> yeah, it just went. <laughs> so What's thank your favorite you. Number? What's your favorite number? 42. <laughs> and thanks for the fish. <laughs> but what is the question? <laughs> there you go. <laughs> yeah. So thank you so much, Fernando. I love this. This was very educational, and I love getting to know you. I think your life is fascinating, and what you're doing is wonderful. And uh, and I love to see that there are people like you that dare go out there and change the world, while thank people you. like me sit behind a computer and support you. So yeah, thank you for having so, me. Thank you guys for being here. And thank you guys, and we'll see you next week. Cool. Thanks. Thank you. Bye.